Hello, welcome to this tutorial series on penetration testing or hacking. In this series I'm going to show you how to use various tools to attack um, insecure computer system and thereby taking control of it. Penetration testing is not um, essentially an illegal activity but it can be done in an illegal way. So please be careful, always use only target machines that you have access to, authorized access to. So what is penetration testing? According to Engel Bretton, it is a legal and authorized attempt to locate and successfully exploit computer systems for the purpose of making those systems more secure. Now exploit means take control of a target system and run some code there. And to do that, you can use various tools. It, it's, these days it's quite easy, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, penetration testing is also called pen testing, PT, or ethical hacking. Now, there is a, a clear difference between two kinds of hackers, white hat and black hat. Pen testers or penetration testers are so-called white hat hackers who, don't, who do not have a malicious intent. And they do always have um, legal and authorized access to the target system. In other words, they have a permission to try to hack into the system to show how insecure it is and thereby help them to um, improve the security of the system. Whereas black hat hackers, they are doing this illegally. Those are the guys who um, attack systems in order to just to show off or maybe get um, in order to get some profit out of it. Steal information and sell it online. Now, I don't encourage you to do the black hat hacking go for the white hack, it's going to be much better for you and you're not going to end up in jail. There is a, a very, very good book for basics and part of this um, tutorial is also based on the book. I really recommend reading through it. I do not have time to cover everything that is in the book, but I recommend after watching these tutorials, have a look at the book, read it through. It's really easy to read, it's easy to approach and it will give you a very good introduction to the basics of hacking and penetration testing. So I strongly recommend having a look at this book. Here's the Amazon link, and I'm also putting a lot of other links in this presentation, so you can find all the links at the um, description section below. So, what are the phases of penetration testing? Now, beginners might often think that, okay, it's just uh, about two things. It's about exploiting a system finding security holes, attacking it, and then running the code, sec uh, code there. But that's not it. Um, before you can attack a system, you need to know what is the system, where is it, what is the IP address, possibly you need to know um, what are the email addresses of the company that you are going to penetration test, maybe uh, user IDs, what kind of servers they have running, and so on and so on. Imagine a situation where you are only given a target's name, for example, a company name, and that's it. The rest you have to find on your own. Um, now, reconnaissance is the process of finding information about the target before you start doing any attack. So it, it's like a, a doing a bank robbery. Like you can do it two two ways. The one way to do it is to just to run into a bank with a gun and point to point at the bank teller and tell. This is a robbery, please give me your money. Obviously, you are going to get caught because there is going to be security cameras, security personnel, and maybe your getaway route hasn't been planned. Well, maybe there's a traffic jam, maybe uh, you, you find uh, your route by the police station, so you get caught very easily. And there's the other way, which is carefully planned actions. You spend months of, of time to plan your attack, plan your bank robbery, you review where are the security cameras, you review um, how is the, the guard procedures, what kind of, uh, how many guards they have, um, do they, are they, um, are they um, carrying weapons or not, and things like that. You are planning your escape route very well. In the latter case, the success, the, the pr probability of success of the bank robbery is much higher. The same thing here, if you do your reconnaissance well, you are more likely to succeed in your attack attempt. So I'm not going to go through the reconnaissance much in this tutorial series, but the book that I mentioned, it has a lot of good tips, a lot of good tools that allow you to collect IP addresses of the target, usernames, um, email addresses, and so on and so on. It's a very important phase 
please do not overlook it. But after you have you collected enough information about the target system or systems, it's time to do scanning for open ports, open services and version of the services and what kind of vulnerabilities they have. So the scanning is, has usually two phases. The first phase is the port scanning where you find the open ports and the service is running the ports and the second is vulnerability scanning which allows you to automatically detect vulnerable or insecure services due to both bad configuration or outdated versions. So there are tools for both of those phases. So it's, it's pretty easy these days. Now after you have uh, found some potential services that you could attack, then it's time for the exploitation, which means using some piece of code to break into the system using the security holes and then take um, control over the system, basically by running some uh, backdoor or another code in the system, depending on what you want to do. Some Sometimes you just want to extract some information, copy it, download it, Sometimes you want to install more permanent backdoor. So after exploiting, that's not the end of it. Um, often you want to continue maintaining the access to the system even after it has been exploited. So uh, maybe installing a backdoor that can survive over reboots or, or service restarts so that you can keep controlling the machine over a long period of time. And finally, and this is especially important in penetration testing, if you have given a task to test a, s a target system and find security holes, you should report your findings. Uh, many of the tools that I'm going to show you, they have automatic reporting functionality, so you can generate reports and then uh, amend them by your own observations. So, so all these five phases are very important part of penetration testing. I will be mostly focusing on the scanning and exploitation. For the other phases, please refer to the book and the second slide of, of, of this presentation. Alright, so a little bit about tools before I finish. So the main tool that you're going to use is the Kali Linux, which is a Linux distribution. It's free um, and it's meant for penetration testing. It has all over 600 different tools for penetration testing. Um, a lot of them are free, open source and you can install more later. So if, if you do not know how to use Linux, I just recommend going through some Linux tutorial before starting to use this, as at least know how to work on the command line. Um, it's suggested that you use this Kali Linux by installing it as a virtual machine or um, booting it directly from a USB drive. I will show you in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to set it up by um, using a virtual machine. If you go to this link, you can download Kali Linux, you can read tutorials, information about it, and installation tutorial will be shown in the next video, so please have a look at it. Another tool that I'm going to use is the um, target machine, so I'm going to install a virtual machine called Metasploitable 2, and this is an uh, intentionally vulnerable machine that has a lot of different services that have security holes, so it's very good for practicing your penetration testing skills. Um, the default username and password is msfadmin, MS so you can easily log into the system. But this is a target machine, so you do actually very little things here. You mostly work with the Kali Linux, and this would be the target of your attacks. If you want to find the IP address of this machine for uh, the purpose of attacking, you can use the ifconfig um, command on Linux. You can check the um, this link for downloading Metasploitable. Okay, there seems to be a, a little slow network. It's a source forge. You can download it here. You can uh, extract it and, and install it. But again, I'm going to show you how to install it in the next uh, tutorial. And there is a, a website which basically shows you how to exploit this Metasploitable, but do not use it yet. First, try to figure it out on your own, maybe following my video and then try to figure out um, things on your own. The, this tutorial shows you, this, this exploitability guide shows you some of the holes, but not all of them. So it's a good start, but um, you, can, you can find out more later. Right, and then the main tool inside Kali Linux that I'm going to use is the Metaplo Metasploit framework, which is currently probably the best free penetration software 
There is also a pro version, commercial pro version of it, but we'll be happy to use just the basic free version. Um, so it's part of Kali and it has hundreds of different modules. It's modular, you can download modules, you can install them and it keeps updating every uh, few weeks so you can always get new exploits and other things. So, so it has different modules for exploitation which meaning um, breaking into the system and running some code. Um, there are a lot of auxiliary modules which allow you to, for example, perform scanning and other um, information gathering processes. Um, there is a, a payload module which is basically the code that will be executed after exploiting is successful. So the exploit and payload usually go together. And then there are post modules which are those uh, post exploitation modules that allow you to, for example, install backdoors or do some other um, um, processes, you, you can run other programs or, or scripts after exploitation has been done. Um, now I told you that there are hundreds of different modules, but you can install more. You can download them from ExploitDB or from this Rapid7.com uh, modules. ExploitDB has a lot of modules or exploits that are for many different um, purposes, and not all of them are suitable for Metaploit Metasploit framework, so you need to carefully see which ones are um, suitable. I'm going to show you also in one tutorial how to install or download and install these modules um, to your Metasploit framework installation. Metasploit.com is the um, place you can get started, and there is a tutorial that will basically have a lot of different um, categories here. You can study about the Meta Metasploit framework. It's a big system and it takes some time to get familiar with it. I'm just going to give you the basic tutorial. All right, so another thing that, um, remember that there are five steps in the penetration testing. The second step is scanning and vulner um, scanning for open ports and vulnerabilities. So in addition to port scanning, there is the um, also a bunch of different software for scanning automatically vulnerabilities of the target system. The open source solution is OpenVAS, which is a vulnerability assessment system or something like that. It's an open source scanner that can be downloaded. You can also install it to the Kali Linux or maybe it's already there. Another good uh, scanner is the Nessus, which is commercial one, but you can use it for free for personal use, but you need to register. So both of these are very powerful, they can be used for uh, scanning vulnerabilities of the target system, but they do not have exploitation, it's only for scanning, and they have, uh, you can export the results directly into Metasploit and use them there, it's quite handy. So, that was all, thanks for watching this um, tutorial, beginning of the tutorial series, and I hope you have some fun exploiting and scanning um, together with me in the future series, thanks.